you too, man. Thank you. Uh, my first question, people talk a lot about Jake Paul's bringing in this new audience, this younger audience. My question, mm -hmm. have you felt that? Do you see younger people and all that just suddenly interested in this fight of yours rather than previous ones? Yeah, of course. I definitely feel it. I mean, first off, starting off, I was at his brother's fight in L.A. And when I was over there, man, like, yeah, for Logan Paul and KSI, in LA in the, the 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 stadium was packed and it wasn't it was just it wasn't the same regular boxing fans that's always there it was I mean kids I'm talking about 10 11 12 13 14 15 not with their parents they are running around you know so that's a you know that's a, a big big difference from regular boxing fans so I definitely feel it you know with this fight too you know there's some people they seem to get mad it's like oh you know like what are they doing to boxing like now the real boxers have to fight for the quote honor of boxing i mean you're one of the quote unquote legit guys is this a problem mm -hmm. or is this just all a good thing because they're bringing attention and bringing money it's all a good thing man when you when you bring in attention and bring in the money how can you be mad right for me it, it's a good thing you know if if um if Jennifer Lopez could have fought on his card, I'm pretty sure she would have did the same thing. And then what people to say. So listen, I think it's an all around for me. It's an all around good thing that you, you got, you know, somebody like Jake Paul that's coming into boxing and, you know, they bring in more fans. You know, I, I think it's a good thing. My and even I mean, even like the I'm sorry to cut you off, even like the legends I watch, um, you know, the hot boxing with Mike Tyson. He said, you know, he likes it. Sugar Ray Leonard likes it. Tommy Hearns likes it. So I think it's for me, you know, if. I approve of it, and if they approve of it, then, you know, the regular boxing fans should too. My final question, you're obviously fighting earlier in the night. What would be your message to those fans who are, hey, you know, I'm going to show up for Jake Paul. What's your message for them to tune in early to watch you guys throw down? I mean, you know, you you, you definitely got to watch me. You watching the call, you definitely got my, you got to watch me, bro, because, you know, I'm former world champion. I think, um, yeah, I'm former world champion. And I'm I'm gonna go out there and do my thing. You know, everybody that know me, they know, you know, I bring the heat. Every time I fight, I'm gonna bring the smoke. So definitely tune in for me because you know I'm gonna I'm gonna do my thing. Hey, okay, thank you and good luck. No problem. Gabriel, thank you. Next up is Boxing Social. James here for Boxing Social in association with Bet Fred. How you doing, Regis? You okay? Um, yeah, I'm good. Yes, sir. Good, good to hear. Um is there a lesson here to be learned for boxers about promotion, self-promotion? You know, Jake's at the top of the card. He's uh, earning that trailer money as well. Uh, should boxers mm -hmm. be lo looking to learn from Jake and put themselves in the spotlight like he has done? That's a great question. Absolutely. I definitely think everybody should, man. You know what? Um, I'm actually starting to do it with myself now. You got to invest in yourself. That's one thing. All fighters, you know, when they're coming up, people come to me on my Instagram all the time, ask me, what should I do? What I, what should I do? You know, I'm telling them, bro, like, invest in yourself, invest in your career. Just because you sign with a promoter, that don't mean they gonna promote you. Like, you you could promote yourself, you know? And um, somebody that said that a long time ago, I never listened with somebody like Adrian Broner, that's somebody that, you know, he sucks right now. He's not that good. But he's still getting big. He's still getting big money um, to fight, basically, and because he promoted himself, right? So I think that everybody, every fighter, should definitely invest in themselves and promote themselves. Self promotion, you have to, you have to do it yourself, right? Because just because you sign with a promoter, they on you. You might fight at my level. You might fight, you know, two or three times a year. Most time, two times a year, and you know, outside of that. What are you? Who are you? Right? You're just doing regular stuff. So I think everybody should definitely self-promote themselves and um and yeah, invest in their career. As part of the promotion of this fight, there's been talk about uh, the sparring session that you guys had about a year ago. Uh, can mm -hmm. you tell us what happened in that sparring? Is, does that give you that confidence coming into the fight? Oh man, you know. So when when me and Ivan spar, you know, first off, you know, you're supposed to keep sparring. You know, is is you're supposed to keep that in the gym. But I'm um, not gonna tell you about the sparring, but. So when, when me and Ivan sparred, I walked in the gym one day. I was like, you know what? I talked to Shane Moses. I was training him at the time. And I was like, man, let me let me spawn with no head again. Shane was like, nah, nah, you need to put the head again on this stuff. And um, let's just say it was a good sparring session. He he busts my nose. That's what he said, you know, which everybody know me in sparring. My nose always busts. So I think that's what he's counting on for this fight. So, I, I mean, hey, let's, let's, let's leave it like that. I was speaking to Ben Askren moments ago. We all were. And he said... Um, he might try to bite Jake uh, coming into this fight, but uh, Red Catch infamously tried to take a piece <laughs> out of Danny Garcia in, in, in their fight. Have you accounted for right. and prepared for any of those types of underhanded uh, tactics uh, for fight night? 
Yeah, man, I don't know. You know, with Ivan, bro, you never know what's going to happen, bro. Ivan, a little, he, he a little off sometimes, you know. But um, yeah, if he bite me, I might bite his ass back. That's just, just know that. He bite me, I'm going to fucking bite him back. That's all. And if, if you come through this fight, how far away do you think you are from title contention? Uh, and are you looking at uh, trying to win a title at Superlight? Are you looking at welterweight? Because you're at 142 for this fight, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 142 for this fight. Yeah. Um, yeah, after I mean, after this, we'll see. We'll see what happens, man. Like in, in boxing, you just never know the landscape. You never know how things are gonna play out. So um after this, I'll talk to my management team and, and see what's next for me. Um, but yeah, I want to be a champion again at 140. So, you know, we'll see. Um, but if they offer me something big at 147, we'll see that also. So I, I can I can do either one. Is Brona still in the equation? Where, where, where's the Brona factor here for you? I think Brona is definitely still in the equation. You know, that's the fight I've been, you know, that's the fight I've been calling out for like five years now. So I think that's definitely, the Brona fight is definitely in the equation. Um, I think it'll be a huge fight between me and him. You know, we both talk a lot, a lot, a lot of shit to each other. So I think that'll be a real, real big fight. So yeah, after this, you know, maybe it could be Brona. Maybe we'll see. We'll see who else. Finally, I just want to get your thoughts on uh, the mega fight that's coming up in the super lightweight division. You're looking at Josh Taylor, Jose Ramirez. Just get your thoughts on that fight. Oh man, I, I got Josh Taylor winning. I mean, it's it, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a good fight. You can't you can't never um count out Jose Ramirez because both of them have so much to fight for. Both of them are fighting. You know, for Jose will meet be the first Mexican ever with four belts, and Josh Taylor will be the first person from Scotland with four belts. So both of them are fighting for a lot. It's gonna be. A, it's. I think it's gonna be about um will, but I think as far as skills wise, Josh Taylor is. You know, he has more skills than um Jose Ramirez. So I go with Josh Taylor. I wish you all the best of the weekend. Thank you, Regis. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, we have Joe Lee. Hi, mate. How are you? Good, man. Good. So, first question I have for you is, do you understand why you are on the undercard of Paul Askren, or are you frustrated that it takes, like, a YouTuber and things like that for you to be in, like, does it frustrate you that people who basically aren't pro fighters are your underneath them? I'm not, I'm not frustrated, bro. No, I'm not. I, I see what you're trying to say. Yeah, I'm not frustrated because it's just like, listen, there, boxing is, is, is a popularity contest, right? I mean, not the whole boxing, but you know, it, it is popular. It's the popularity contest and right. More people are coming to see Jake Paul, you know? So I'm not frustrated at all, bro. Like he's, he's actually helping my career to be honest. So I'm no, I'm not frustrated at all. And a moment ago, you said there was a potential for you to move up to 147 other than the likes of Adrian Broner, what other big names you would like to fight there? Um, anybody, bro. I mean, anybody with a belt. I'm, I'll be chasing belts. You know, I, I, somebody that I want to fight is like Danny Garcia, but I think Danny Garcia is going to 154. That's what I'm hearing. So, um, for me, anybody with a belt at 147, I'll be chasing them. Once I do go up, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying I'm going to 147 right now. I said that, you know, it depends. It depends on what's yeah. going to happen. But right now, for me, sadly, is that's my main focus. It's not about, you know, what's next. Right now, I got to focus on one person, Ivan Ray Cage. And I know you said there's more attention towards your fights when you're on a Triller fight card and it's a bigger fight card as a whole. Have you genuinely seen like a boost in your social media numbers and things like that in the build up to this fight? Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah, I've seen a boost in social media and stuff like that. People been tagging all kinds of stuff and, you know, like um kids and all have been following me and writing me. So, yeah, I definitely see a, a boost. And do you think, last one for me, do you think this is the future of boxing, the, the performances from the likes of Snoop Dogg, the, the artists that are going to be on stage? Do you feel like this is the new wave and you're going to be part of this? Hopefully so. I definitely hope so. You know, um, you know, I told this story a, a few times already, but I had a fight in in um in New Orleans and you know, we want to do my, I have like my own like marketing team out there in New Orleans, and we want to do the same exact thing. We want to they uh, what we want to do is we want to bring all like the local artists from New Orleans and have them perform, you know, and that would have brought that would have brought a lot of more people to the fight, you know, but at the time, Top Rank shut it down, um, ESPN shut it down and the Louisiana Commission, they all shut that down. And now Triller's doing the same thing. So I think this is for me, I think this is great for boxing. You got all these people. So all these performers like Justin Bieber and Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and all these people that's going to be here. All, all their fans, they might not even be boxing fans, but they're going to tune in. And then so all my fans and then Jake Paul fans and all these different fans are tuning into this one event. And so then they'll be then they'll um, everybody will kind of share fans. I think I think it's a great thing. And I think, you, you know, boxing needed this for a long time. But, you know, Triller did it. 
Brilliant. Best of luck. And hopefully we'll see you fight again in the UK very soon after that last fantastic fight with Josh Taylor. Thank you. Cheers, man. Cheers. Thank you, Joe. Next up is Jake Bennett, MNR. Hey, Jake Bennett here with Music News and Rumors. How's it going, Regis? I'm good, brother. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks. So you've talked to before about how it's been a hard road to make it where you are today. And you're an inspiration to a lot of people out there. What do you have to say to your fans who aspire to reach the heights you have in your career? I mean, I mean, it's, it's for us, for me, bro, I, like, you know, I did an interview the other day, like, yeah, I made it, you know, um, and I had like a long, hard road to get where I'm at, you know. So for what I would tell like upcoming fighters or anybody, you know, just stick with it. You got to be consistent. You definitely got to be consistent. You got to give everything you got. Um, for me, I was like working as a personal trainer for like six to eight years. And, but I always believed in myself. I always believed in my ability. It was never quit in me. And it was never, um, I know you, I, I know a lot of athletes and stuff. They'll tell, they'll go to schools and tell kids, you have to have a backup plan. But for me, it was no backup plan. You know, I'll figure the backup plan after I'm, if I have this, if I don't have this, that's when I figure a backup plan, a backup plan. So, um, yeah, that's, I just I just was all the way invested in my career in boxing. I was all the way invested in boxing all the way, and it wasn't no failing for me. So, you know, that's why I got to where I'm at today. All right, great. Thanks very much. Next up is Donna Corby. Uh, Regis, you've fought for so many great promoters on so many great shows in your career. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about behind the scenes how you're you're enjoying working with uh, with Triller and I suppose Ryan Kavanaugh and Snoop Dogg. Um, well, it's great, bro. Like, I mean, everything is great. Like, I mean, even like the whole bubble thing going on right now, it's 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 just good. Like, it's just you know, I, of course, I fought for a lot of different promotions and all that type of stuff. But this is, you know, I just I like it. I just like everything that's going on here. I like the promotion. They're running smooth. Everything is good. You know, I can't complain about nothing. It appears that they've got a lot of people. They've got some some good boxing people involved too, but they've taken a lot of people from outside of the world of boxing. You're not seeing any, um, you know, you're not seeing any Bob Arum here. You're not seeing any Ludabella here. It's 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 all it's sort of new people to the space. Mm -hmm. Do you think the boxing kind of needed that from a, a new big promoter uh, at some point? Yeah, I definitely think so. I don't want to talk shit about Bob Arum and Ludabella, of course. Don't no, of course, I'm, pad, yeah, those know? are examples. I'm giving. Yeah, don't give. Yeah, but yeah, I mean. It's, it's always good to bring in new people, right? It's always to bring in, um, it's, it's always good to bring in like new faces and just new um, ideas. And like I said, with this whole trailer thing going on, that's a, it's a great thing that we got this stuff going on because it's, it's, it's new, it's, it's, it's new ideas and you're bringing in new fans. You know, you can't keep doing the same old thing. The world is ever changing. You got to change the world. So, and I, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm loving every second of this. If you were to speak to people who were at the sports book this weekend gambling on your fight, what would you tell them to bet on? I would tell them don't bet on me because you're not going to, you know, I would say don't, don't bet because I'm, um, I'm going, I'm going to fuck them up anyway. Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the eyes are fucking crazy. You know, I don't bet. I'm not a betting person. But if you, a lot of people saying all kinds of stuff under one, under two, under three, all that. I don't, I don't, bro. I, I just go out there and do what I got to do. I don't worry about no bets and all that stuff. You know, some people, they, they get in your, not getting your head, but they're like all my neighbors and stuff. They'll tell me yeah, I'm betting and I'm, I'm going to bet this. I'm bet like, bro, like leave me alone. Like I'm, I'm going to go out there and do my thing. You know, that's what I'm going to do. What's the biggest one you've heard of? What's the biggest bet you've heard uh, somebody making? I think on you? like shit, one round or something like that. Somebody, I mean, as far as money wise, I don't know, but you know, like they say, like one round or something. Like, bro, like leave me alone, bro. Like, I'm not worried about that. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go out there and do me. I'm not worried about, you know, I'm, I'm prepared for. I think we're doing ten rounds. I'm prepared for ten rounds. I'm not, I'm not worried about none of the other stuff. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Donna, and uh, thank you, Regis. We're clear. Appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you. All right, everyone, at the bottom of the hour, we'll have Jake at the bottom of the hour or whenever he's here. So it might be before that, whenever he comes in. Uh, so just stay tuned.